Welcome to the latest episode of Grind Time. Unfortunately, earlier this week, our 98 Boxster started showing a Trek engine light. I've already diagnosed it as an oxygen sensor. However, on this car with the flat six, there's actually four of them. So I'm going to show you two things today in addition to how to change it out. The first thing is why when you own a Porsche, uh, this standard reader is not good enough to tell you why or with which sensor it is and why you need a Durametric if you're gonna do any work on your own Porsches. The other thing I'm going to show is how you can set up your MacBook to run the PC-based Durametric. All right, so when I put the diagnostic tester in my standard one, this is what came up, the 1411 uh, air injection cylinder four to six. So it does show me the bank, but you don't know whether it's the front or rear. And this is actually a secondary code um, I did not show the uh, first one. Um, so the oxygen sense, it's saying the oxygen sensor on bank four to six, and then this code is blowing as well. It's a great example of how uh, a standard code reader doesn't give you exact detail because there's four oxygen sensors on this car. Two catalytic converters, one on each bank. So two sensors that are forward of the cats and two that are rear of the cats. So I think I had been driving this thing for about a week and a half. While I was waiting for the part to come in from Pelican. And um, that may have uh, had a couple of these this other code go. So moving on. This is what you do if you need the... It's called Parallels for Mac. So Google that. And this is the software I downloaded. It's called Parallels for Desktop uh, for Mac. And you just pick that the non-ad one I never pick ads and that's what you download and install so I'm not going to waste your time showing that I'm going to assume you know how to do that then once it's installed you go to the parallels desktop icon all right so you typically because I was using a trial um, you, it's going to ask you to continue the trial in a few more days I haven't decided whether I'm going to buy it yet the important distinction here is that you do not need to buy a Windows license. So I'm going to stop it right there. Windows 10, you can use, unlike previous versions of Windows, you do not need a license to do basic things. Uh, so you don't need to spend the extra $100 on top of that just to get what you need. So basically the Durametric is here. I run it as an administrator and I plug it in. And then once it goes, you may get this question about, um, yes, you want to modify things. And as it runs, I'm going to show a screenshot. So this is basically the screenshot that comes up when I um, had the error codes. So, And it shows it in the sequence, which makes more sense. So first one is the O2 sensor. And it's the one, you see the distinction, ahead of the catalytic converter on banks four to six. Now... What's a little disconcerting is the secondary air system on cylinder uh, one to three is now reading signal implausible, as well as the one on um, the uh, right bank, so the, the, the bank that I'm putting the O2 sensor on. I'm hoping all of these clear out now that I'm putting the new O2 sensor in, because when I looked a couple weeks ago before I ordered the part, this was the one I needed. So um, typically when you do these kinds of things, if you don't do them quick enough, you start getting these other faults. So let's hope that um, when this runs at course, it uh, isn't an issue. All right. So that's basically how I was able to use the Durametric with my Mac. So here I am before I work on anything electronic. I uh, take my 10 millimeter wrench, open the frunk, and I open the battery case, the battery tray, excuse me, and I remove the negative. There's just too many electronics on this thing, even for a 1998 vintage. These are the two books I use. Um, I always refer to them. The Motors Books Workshop, 101 Projects for Your Boxster. There's a lot of modifications in it uh, that I haven't done because it is a stock car, but that is a great book to help you as a secondary reference to the Boxster service manual that's on the right. Between the two, I've used this book for uh, the few things I've had to do on the car, like the water pump, the oil air separator, 
and most importantly, it was very helpful rebuilding the complete suspension front and rear over. Uh, Okay, before I get into it, I just want to show you the tool as a close-up. So here's the old oxygen sensor. This plastic cap is what came with the new one that goes into the exhaust system. And then this is the and this is the connector that you it was difficult to see when I did the video, but hopefully so as you put the other the male piece in that closes it and locks it. It's a very positive connection. Um, so just wanted to show that and put that in the description. And then here's the tool that I bought. also bought. It's about $22. I think it's a 22 millimeter. And the way this works is, you see how that's, you see how that's slotted? It fits around and slides right down. So then, don't let the hex fool you. A standard 3 8 fits that, and you're able to either tighten it or loosen it. So you'll see, you'll see me use a breaker bar to pull that down, and then torque it down to the torque the new one that is to the proper one. So just wanted to show that for a little clarification before we get into the narration. All right, so here I am showing that oxygen sensor, and I'm looking up through. Now, unfortunately, I'm quickly realizing that. There, the tie-in bars, this aluminum bar that's like right directly overhead, that ties into that tr the windage tray, not the windage tray, excuse me, but the uh, the suspension tie-in tray underneath the engine. So there's 14 bolts to this. I just went ahead, removed it. Um, I hate doing it, but because uh, it does add time to it, but it just you're going to see how much room it makes. Uh, much easier so there's the new unit going in it already has uh, anti-seize included with it and I just thread that in into the exhaust that is and here I am putting that uh, special tool on with my torque wrench with a three three quarter to uh, or excuse me half inch to three eighths adapter, so I went a little bit lower on the torque uh, to compensate for that. But, uh, here I am torquing that down. I think it's 44, 48 foot pounds of torque, but that's why I look at the book. I don't need to memorize things like that. And once I'm happy with the torque, now I'm playing with the connector and my fidgety light because so many things are aluminum underneath this. It's Unlike the Cadillac, it's uh, uh, very hard to find a, a, a proper place to put the magnet. Uh, a little out of focus here, but I noticed that the, the wiring and was uh, missing some of its electrical tape compared to the uh, the other cylinder bank. So I cut off some of the fray uh, electrical tape, and I didn't show it there, but I re I uh, retaped it so that it's not uh, fraying against any of the hot pieces. So here's... Uh, the quick um, re reset of the 14 bolts and the three uh, suspension tie-in pieces that are um, aluminum and uh, torque those down. I think those are 46 as well. And the two that meet the uh, suspension just ahead of the wheel that you can't see there, I think is uh, 64. So again, another reference for the book. That's why I have those. Uh, okay, so here's the code reader again. So as you'd expect, I disconnected the negative terminal. Uh, so now when I re uh, put the battery on, it lost all the fault codes. But look at the emission status light. So typically these code readers know, because there's no history, they're basically, that, that yellow LED is telling you, hey, yeah, there's no codes, but... Um, there's also no history in the system now, so it's a cautionary tale of uh, I'm going to need another 100, 150 miles to, to check everything and see that everything levels out. I think if I put that on and I don't see the light come back on and I put this on in another 150 or so, I'm going to double check that to make sure the green light's on. That way I know the system doesn't have any other faults and we can go from there. So there you have it. That's the um, 
That was the, the latest Grime Time project. Hopefully, uh, um, so as you can see, the Durametric is, comes in very handy when you've got a Porsche. And you can use that to quickly identify which parts you need, the correct parts. Otherwise, if you use a standard thing, you're, you're going down a rabbit hole of expensive parts. Um, Renlist and the other Porsche forums are filled with people that have done that uh, when they had, if they had just spent the three hundred dollars ahead of time on the on the Durametric, they would have uh, pinpointed the exact uh, part they needed to get. So that's uh, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully, you're liking these videos of the various cars I'm working on nearly daily in the garage. Please subscribe, and by all means, do check out our. Uh, guys with rides website for other great content and as well as our classifieds and that we we see on craigslist and our reserve parking speed features thanks for watching mm -hmm.